episode six of Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. I'm Tom Merritt. Those are the sounds of the Andrew Allen Trio. But you haven't picked up Andrew Allen Trio's live from the cantina yet. He's still got a couple weeks. I mean, it'll actually be there even after a couple weeks. But get it before the big episode seven comes out at andrewallentrio.com. He's got lots of great music there, actually. Uh, go check that out. Big thanks to Andrew Allen for letting us use this music on Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. Uh, if you're jumping in on episode six... Go back and listen to an earlier episode, but just in case, the idea here is that I, Tom Merritt, have in fact seen uh, Star Wars a lot over the years, from age seven when the first movie came out uh, all the way through, but I wanted to watch them again in advance of episode seven, and I wanted to try to approach them as if I had never seen them before. So even though I'm not ignorant of them, I am pretending I'm dumb about Star Wars, and if I'm dumb about Star Wars, I look at episode one and I think logically, well, that's the first one I should watch, and I have watched all of them in order to date. Uh, And so I am giving you my best attempt to wipe my mind clean, not remember character names, because famously when I talk about movies that I've just seen, if I'm not paying close attention, I don't remember character names. Uh, If you ever watch my show, Cord Killers, uh, you can attest to that. Uh, So here we go for episode six, Return of the Jedi. Uh, We got some good scrolling. Uh, So the scrolling's a good thing. I love the scrolling. Uh, The Merc, a.k.a. Han, is on Tatooine which is not exactly where this all started, but it was right there in episode one. So we're going right back to the beginning. Uh, They're building another planet station. Uh, They call it the Death Star. Uh, And and, and so we're going right back to it. That was just a couple episodes ago. Why didn't they crank these out earlier? I don't know. Kind of derivative of episode four. I'm worried about Uh, planet station. And uh, then we get the big spaceship and several spaceships. And these are the best of all spaceships uh, that we have seen. They're huge. There's many of them. And then you see the planet station and you realize, oh, this is why we're getting it again. It's not done. We get to see the interior. It's under construction. You can almost see the cranes out there moving things into place. Bunch of Republic ships here. Uh, Great opening. I love this space stuff. I love the planet. I love that we always see spaceships flying over the planet. And this time we get the planet station. We get the big Republic ships. We get the moon down there. And then we go right into Anakin. Oh, this is the guy, right? The whole series is about this guy, Anakin Vader. And I'm so excited that we're finally focusing on the main character right up top again. Uh, And then we switch away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to the desert planet, uh, which uh, this time, episode four, it didn't quite look the same. This time, the desert planet looks consistent with what it did in the early eps. And uh, we see our robot friends, uh, 3PO and R2, uh, wandering along, which they've done before, if you remember. Uh, 3PO was created on this planet, but his memory was wiped. R2 knows, and I guess R2 just doesn't want to tell him. I don't know. Uh, Then we go inside uh, this weird location, I guess, where Slug Guy is, and we see these pig guards, and I really, really thought the pig guards were going to kill the bots. Uh, And then you have a nice haunted house trope when the door closes behind them. You get the squid-looking guy uh, who's weird, but good aliens. We're, this whole series, all the way through, has had excellent aliens. And then right into Slug Guy, which we haven't seen except for a brief appearance in Episode 4. Uh, and then R2 plays a hologram of Luke. Now, <laughs> why didn't R2 do the Leia hologram that big back in Episode 4? He does a nice big hologram of Luke. Maybe that's because Luke's pretending to be a Jedi? Why is he pretending to be a Jedi? I guess he's just trying to bluff the slug guy. Slug guy doesn't know he hasn't completed his training. Uh, and then Luke's like, I give you these two robots. You know, you know, Luke, your dad made one of those. You might not want to be so glib with them. Uh, but he didn't, it didn't work. The slug guy knows he's not a Jedi. Uh, now Han is up there frozen still. A little weird thing there is that if he's up on a wall, he can't get slug guy the money that he owes him. So it doesn't quite make sense that he's up there. Um, then we see the biggest insight into the robot culture that we have seen, or the droid, as they as they give you these two droids. I guess they're called droids. Uh, first, we'll look at that, uh, and it's torture. Um, it's, it's it's kind of disturbing, really. Uh, then we get so it's I know it's not exactly a bar, but we get a bar type scene in Slug Guy's 
house here. Uh, cool bar music. And uh, look at that, son of Rocket Guy is there. Of course, because he is the one who grabbed Han, so it makes sense that he would be around. He's just kind of hanging around. We're not sure exactly why. I guess he didn't collect his money yet. Maybe he likes hanging out. Good music, good drinks. Uh, so son of Rocket Guy's like, well, you know, why not? I'll just hang out with Slug Guy. Uh, and then we see why it might make sense for Slug Guy to keep Han frozen. Slug Guy is just into random cruelty, okay? So he's got this chain girl who he makes dance to this music, and then he kills her for no reason by dropping her into a pit um, for, for, no, for no real reason. Uh, she she just gets killed by this big monster, and we don't get a good look at the monster yet. Uh, and then we find out, oh crap, Chewie got caught, too. Uh, so pretty much everybody but the kids in Lando <laughs> have been caught at this point. And uh, then we see Slug Guy is a hardened bargainer. Uh, and then we finally see that Lando... Okay, so there's something going on, because Lando's in disguise inside Slug Guy's place. I don't know how he sneaked in there. We don't ever get an explanation of that. Um, but we're not focusing on Anakin. We're not even focusing on Anakin's kids. It's all about side characters here. And then a short guy comes in, uh, and, and that's where we hear about the bargaining, because the short guy brought Chewie in. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm like, okay, the short guy comes back. I thought he was going to kill Han. Because he walks up and he starts meddling with controls. Get a cool melting effect of Han coming back to life and being told, well, you've got this freezing sickness. We're like, okay, why is this short guy uh, <laughs> saving Han? Well, it's not a short guy at all. It's Leia. Han and Leia just go right at it. Uh, so we know what's up with them now. Uh, but Slug Guy knew. He is cruel and smart. And so he turns on the lights. He's like, ha-ha, surprise. I was watching the whole time. Well, then why'd you let her unfreeze? Nah, whatever. Okay, so not a great plan. Leia captured two. So now we got Lando undercover, Luke out pretending to be a Jedi somewhere, but he's not there yet, and everybody else captured. Um, <laughs> then they throw Han in a cell with Chewie. That doesn't seem like a good plan, but whatever. Uh, finally, Luke does show up, and he's dressed like a bad robe guy. He looks like Sidious or the horned head guy, uh, from earlier episodes, he can do the hand wave thing where he moves things. I'm starting to wonder, now, wait a minute, did Luke go evil in between these episodes? Um, and then he comes in to Slug Guy's room, and we see that Leia's the new chain girl, and we know what happens to chain girls, so that's not good. Um, Luke pulls the mind trick thing, the hand wave thing, on the squid looking guy, but it doesn't work on the slug guy. So slug guy is kind of like uh, the old slave owner guy from episode one. Uh, Luke says something about my powers. So I'm wondering at this point, oh, did he finish his training? Because he's all dressed up now. Maybe he went back to Yoda and finished his training, uh, but he doesn't have his lightsaber. And then I remember, oh, <laughs> right. He dropped the lightsaber. So I guess if he went back and finished his training, he didn't get a new lightsaber, uh, but he, he grabs a blaster Meanwhile, Lando's just, I'm starting to think, well, did Lando go over? He's not really doing much. Uh, and Luke gets captured. And then Luke gets thrown down where Chain Girl got eaten. Luke's about to get eaten. Uh, the big old monster eats a pig guy. Luke does some clever bone work to prop monster's mouth open. By the way, this monster is the best yet. Uh, this is the best monster since episode two. Bad cave design, though, because you leave a big <laughs> spiked grate open where anybody could run over and turn it on uh, and protect themselves, but Luke does it one better. He has it come down on the monster's head, and there's a, a real funny bit that I liked where the trainer is sad, because he's obviously been caring for this monster, you know? And trainers of monsters have feelings, too. That was a nice little touch. Um, Luke's bravado with Slug Guy is odd at this point, especially because he almost just got killed by a monster. Uh, this is a crappy plan. This plan is not good. If the plan was, hey, let's all get captured and have one guy undercover not do anything, uh, and then we'll have the slug guy threaten to throw us into some other thing that'll digest us for a thousand years. Not a good plan. This is not a good plan at all. Then we get some wild animals, which you know I like that. Uh, some mammoth-looking things. That's kind of cool. We are spending a long time on the desert planet at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm like, are we ever going to get back to Anakin? 
But then we get on the uh, on the boat, floaty boat thing, and R2 serving drinks. That's kind of funny. Luke seems confident. I'm just thinking maybe Luke's lost his mind at this point, kind of like Han says. Uh, Slug guy is disgusting and getting more disgusting all the time. Uh, Pit monster looks good. He's he's got uh, he's got great big tongue and tentacles. And then Luke comes out on a diving board and says, free us or die. Really, Luke? Like, you're tied up on the edge of a diving board, about to be thrown into a pit with a monster that's going to eat you for a thousand years. Free us or die. Uh, But then Luke nods to Lando, right? So Lando's in position. Then R2 moves and gets into position. I'm like, okay, I guess something's up here. Ah, R2 had the new lightsaber. Okay, so... R2 shoots the lightsaber over to Luke. I don't know how they knew it was all going to go this way, but I guess they they had several contingency plans in place. This one's green, by the way, which is similar to what Kenobi's was. Um, Son of Clones versus Son of Anakin uh, here, as we have Luke and Son of Rocket Guy do a little battle. So that was a little interesting callback little bit of a, a second generation move there. Wait, was Kenobi's green? Was it, whose was green? Anyway, uh, and then right after I have that cool moment with Luke and Son of Rocket Guy, uh, Son of Rocket Guy gets thrown into the pit uh, with the monster. And that's the end of Son of Rocket Guy. Seems like kind of a disappointing end to a story that began with the creation of an entire clone army and then a special son. And we like we never really get to know the son that well. Uh, after like episode two and he just gets thrown in a pit and dies. So that that's it for your story. At least we think so. And he never comes back in this episode. Uh, then it's all on, right? The battle's on. Leia chain chokes the slug guy. Love her. Go Leia. Finally getting stuff to do. She was sidelined a little in episode four, I felt like. Uh, everybody but Han and 3PO are apparently in on the plan. Uh, and Han gets up to speed Remember, he was kind of blind when he was unfrozen, and so Lando falls and is about to fall into the pit with the creature, and then Han shoots him free. Uh, So I guess he's not blind anymore. Wait, I thought you were blind. That was a nice little moment there. Uh, R2 then pushes 3PO off into the sand, which he did in episode two as well. Like R2 just likes to push 3PO off of things without explaining. Leia blows up the ship. Another move by Leia. Uh, I was wrong. This was a great plan, apparently, because it all turns out great. Uh, Luke uh, gets everybody away on the floaty boat. Uh, Lando, Han, Chewie, they go pick up R2 and 3PO out of the sand, and they're off. Then next thing we know, uh, Junk Ship and Luke's little fighter thing are out in space and flying away. And Luke's like, ah, you know what? I'm going to go off alone to Dagobah again because that's my thing, apparently. I'm going to do that every episode now. All right, so then we're finally back at the planet station. And we finally, we haven't seen him for, well, we barely saw him last episode. We finally see Palpatine again, and he's got his little red guards from episode three. Uh, He doesn't look so good, though. The years have not been kind to Palpatine, let's be honest. And he explains his plan. Basically, he wants to Anakin Luke. He He wants Anakin Vader to grab his son and persuade him to join them in the dark side. Uh, you know, will use his his love of companionship, his feelings for you against him, which is exactly what he did with Anakin. He used Anakin's feelings for Padme against him, and then then we're done with that scene. That was kind of short. Uh, and then, but but then we're back to Yoda. Finally, we get to see Yoda. Uh, Yoda got old fast. Talk about not looking so good. We just saw him. He was yeah. I mean, he was old, but he's doing okay now. He's coughing up a lung. Uh, nine here, nine hundred years old. Well, you look so good. You know, well, you, you, okay. I guess when I'm nine hundred, I'm I'll call you. Uh, Luke kind of note. I kind of noticed this. Now, this I should have noticed this earlier. Luke kind of dressed like Anakin from Episode Three, so we're getting that parallel, right? It's a nice parallel that Luke's going to go through the same testing here. Then Yoda says, and that way he tells Yoda, I, I came back to finish my training. So I guess Luke didn't finish his training. But then Yoda says, oh, you don't need any more training, which that confused the heck out of me because Yoda made a big deal about how his training wasn't done before he left to go to the Cloud City in episode five. Uh, now Yoda's like, man, yeah, you're fine. You, you fought your dad. I guess that's enough. Uh, very confusing. Trying to manipulate him like one last thing. Oh, your training's done. Well, it's not quite done. Your training's done, but you're not a Jedi. You got to kill Vader which we all know, even Luke knows, 
that that that's his dad. And Yoda says, only then will a Jedi will you be. Um, and then Luke's like, wait, you know, is is Darth Vader Anakin? Is he my father? And Yoda's like, I'm sleepy. I'm just gonna avoid that question. Uh, told uh, yeah, and Luke's like, well, no, he told me. He told me. He's like, I'm your dad. Uh, and Yoda says, oh, honesty is unexpected and unfortunate. Yoda is always holding back things from Skywalkers and blaming them for things. He's got a thing against Skywalkers for some reason. Finally gives him some good advice about Palpatine, though. Like, beware of Palpatine. He's a manipulative jerk. Avoid him. Good, good uh, uh, things there. Now, he had just said, you're not a Jedi yet. And then he says, you're the last of the Jedi. So... <laughs> Yoda, I mean, it's sad because Yoda dies before he can tell Luke that he has a sister. Um, but then Yoda does the Kenobi thing. He does the disappearance. So I'm like, wait a minute, does that mean we're going to get a ghost Yoda? And speak of the ghost Yodas, ghost Kenobi shows up right there. Uh, and Luke, uh, thank you, Luke, immediately goes, why'd you lie to me about my dad? And Kenobi gives him some two-sided thing. Well, when he became Darth Vader, uh, your dad died from a certain point of view because that's the kind of relativist ideology that the Jedi have. Then he said, then he just lied. Then he starts lying some more as if to prove that you can't trust Jedi. He's like, you know, when I met your father, he was already a great pilot. I mean, was he? He could do a pod race. Also, Kenobi didn't really meet him at the pod racing. Also, he says he was... Uh, <laughs> That that he 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 dis he basically implies that he discovered Anakin, which Qui Gon discovered Anakin. So Kenobi's a credit stealer, uh, and then he's like, you know, I thought I could train him better than Yoda. No, you went to Yoda and said, hey, can I train him? And yet is like Yoda's like, well, I, I really don't want you to, but I guess you can. Uh, all of this is used to try to guilt Luke into killing his dad. You were our only hope, Luke, which is what they used to say to Anakin, by the way. Oh, wait, you're not our only hope because you have a sister. Uh, oh, you guessed that you have a sister. Well, um, bury, your, bury, those, bury those feelings. Those are bad. Ignore the Jedi, Luke. Ignore everything they say. You're better than them is basically what I'm getting here. They effed up your dad. They caused all this. You need to ascend beyond that political BS that they preach. All right, now we're in a briefing room, and there's a white gown lady who apparently is the leader of the rebellion now. I thought there was a bearded guy who led it in episode four, and we didn't really see. Then there was a different guy leading it in episode five. So it was, it's the rebellion. You know, politics move fast when you're a ragtag group like that. Uh, then we get an even more squiddy guy. Talk about squid. Uh, this guy's a real squiddy guy uh, who's, who's essentially the military commander. So I guess Leia doesn't do briefings. This guy does now. Uh, they have a more sensible destruction plan than a little exhaust port uh, because that big station isn't done yet. They're just going to fly into it and blow up the reactor. That makes sense. Then you get Han trolling Lando about being part of the deal, but it turns out that Lando's volunteered for an even more dangerous uh, mission. And then Luke just conveniently walks in and says, well, I'd like to join this mission too. So we get all our main characters and we, you know, brother and sister and Han and Chewie. And then it turns out the robots too. Like why you take the EPO on this mission? I have no idea. He's a protocol droid. He should stay on the ship. Kind of useless. Uh, then we get a great look at the Rebel fleet again, which has got a very Battlestar Galactica feel, this ragtag group. I love that. Uh, quick scene with Palpatine still pushing Anakin around. A kind of a cool callback to how Palpatine manipulated Anakin uh, in the second and third episode. So they still have that dynamic, kind of reestablishing that because we haven't seen them together in a while. Uh, man, the Planet Station scenes are so short. Then we get the line from Han as they're flying a stolen uh, Empire ship uh, to just, you know, fly casual. That was, That's pretty funny. Uh, and then Luke says that he can feel his dad. He and his dad are in sync. Uh, and I'm like, this is so cool. This is what these six episodes have been building up to, is this relationship, building up Anakin and his fall and building up Luke who came out of that fall and his relationship with his dad. And it's just what a good moment. Okay. So we're to the forest moon. It's cool. Still not as alien. These, these, these planets are more look like they're just pieces of earth than the first three episodes did, but it's still pretty cool. 
Uh, we get a nice brother and sister chase scene where Luke and Leia are on one bike chasing after some clone troopers and and then uh, they have to split up. Uh, I love that forest chase. Uh, great shots in there. The uh, clone cycle riders at one point are like speed cops. They see Luke and Leia fly by and then they're like, woo, you know how fast you were going? Also, you're rebels. We're going to kill you. Uh, Leia sure lucked out uh, when she fell off before her bike exploded. Luke had an Anakin moment where he pulls out his lightsaber and can deflect uh, uh, blaster bolts. So that's good. Uh, he's definitely improved somehow. Maybe he did some practicing on his own. Uh, 3PO, I, I got to say, he's almost useless as Jar Jar was in the first couple of movies. Uh, at, at least they didn't make 3PO a general or anything like that. Okay, we're back to Leia. I thought Leia, I thought we saw Leia look up when she crashed, but then she's asleep. She's passed out. So maybe she passed out. And we get this little bear creature uh, show up. And we haven't seen primitive creatures before. So I love this. Yeah, and he's way primitive. He's, you know, he's got flint knives and bows and arrows. And they, they almost overdo it when they're like, uh, he doesn't know what a hat is. He's scared. I mean, he's scared when Leia takes off her hat, like she lost her head or something. And it's weird because... I mean, he has a hood on, I guess, not a hat, but you think he'd know, like, there can be other things cover one's head. Uh, but a clone trooper storm clone thing comes up and uh, almost gets Leia, and good work, mini bear, uh, getting rid of that trooper with the shin kick. Also, I kind of noticed here that the trooper does not sound like the clones anymore. Uh, although it was weird that Leia had to help the mini bear off the log. All right, back to Anakin. Uh, compassion will be his undoing, just like Anakin and Padme again. Uh, then we don't know where Mini Bear took Leia, so they're out looking for them. Chewie smells something, uh, and then it turns out to be meat, and that's a Mini Bear trap. That's a very primitive trap. It's got to be from the Mini Bear. Uh, dumb move by Luke and Han and Chewie, well, especially Chewie, who just let his stomach overwhelm. Uh, R2 elevator operator, AK and net cutter, Gets them out of there. Uh, and the mini bears show up with spears. Lots of them. Not nice anymore. Damn. Uh, how does Luke know it will be all right? Because it is not going to be all right. Although they do seem to worship 3PO. Han's a little bit of a jerk here. And uh, we go to a tree city. I like the mini bear tree city. Uh, boy, was Luke wrong about everything going to be all right. In fact, looks like mini bears would like to eat Han and Luke. And apparently R2. I'm not sure. It's a complex society here. Uh, it's actually the most fleshed out alien society that we've met that didn't have humans in it. Nice use of Jedi powers there by Luke to levitate 3PO, play on their worshiping of him. Uh, we get more Han and Leia kissing, so that's settled. They're, they're on the road. Uh, and then we get this cool scene where 3PO is retelling the story of just the last couple eps. It would have been cooler if he told like the whole road, but again, memory wipe. So uh, pretty fast, our heroes move from being dinner to being part of the tribe, apparently. Okay, um, then we get a nice brother-sister moment where Luke knows, like, for, for finally, finally, Luke knows that Leia is his sister. Ask Leia to remember Padme. Now, how... How would Leia remember Padme at all? She says, oh, you know, I, I was very young. I remember just a little about her. And Luke says, I don't remember anything about my mother. If, if Padme remembered, I'm sorry, if Leia remembered anything about Padme, it would be some kind of Jedi forcey thing. But then Luke would seemingly be able to do it too. But he lays out all the bombs. Uh, he told her, I'm your brother. He told her, well, first he told her, uh, Darth Vader is my dad, Anakin. Oh, and by the way, he is also your dad because you're my sister. Uh, such a big moment that we've been waiting for since episode, well, the end of episode three, really, but episode four, when we all knew, like, you two need to realize that you are brother and sister. And of course, bearing out my theory, where there was always some weird subconscious awareness of that, she's like, somehow I've always known, uh, oh crap, Luke wants to save dad. Uh, see, Luke is better than the Jedi. And I kind of hoped he would recruit Leia into going with him, but he doesn't. Uh, uh, and then Han comes up, and he's all like, why y'all upset? 
well, my brother's off being forcey. Well, no, she doesn't say anything about it. She's like, I can't tell you. Why can't she tell Han? Uh, to, I, I guess she's just overwhelmed. There's too much going on at once. But of course, Han now gets the wrong idea. Okay, back to the planet station. So cool, half built, really good shots of that. Uh, then we're back down on the ground. We got the clumsy elephant things from the ice planet. You think they would have learned that those things are totally ineffective after episode five, but there's one there. And then, hey, Dad, uh, it's me, Luke. I'm all bound up because people captured me, but I really gave myself in. Uh, calls him Anakin. Uh, he says, you know, my father, Anakin Skywalker. Uh, ooh, this is the first time anyone's called him Anakin since he put on the mask. Go, Luke. Uh, the calm talk. This is even better I mean, this is actually the perfect next step after meeting and battling and 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 Anakin letting Luke know who he was. So compelling. Uh, just that calm sort of like father-son <laughs> dynamic. Anakin takes the law. Oh, I see you made a lightsaber. It's, it's great work, son. He's so proud. Uh, and then Luke saying, there's good in you. Uh, and you... You hear episode three, Anakin, it is too late for me, son. And then he then he switches back to end of episode three, Anakin, a.k.a. Darth Vader, and says, you know, you will you will certainly learn, learn the power of the dark side. And then Luke says, if that's true, my father is truly dead. Chills this huge moment between father and son. Uh, and you, you you know, when Anakin says it is too late for me, son. You you could tell. There is still that old Anakin in there. He is still in there. Back to the mini bears. Uh, how are they going to help? Well, they got numbers. Turns out they also have scouting knowledge. So they come in very useful and saying, hey, you know what, guys? There's a back door here. I uh, almost forgot about the rebel fleet hanging out in space. Space battle still going on. Still huge. Still great. Uh, the mini bears are smart. Cause a diversion. At first, you're like, oh, crap. Primitive society. They're going to blow it. No, they're actually doing it on purpose to lead the troopers away, make it easier to get in. Uh, 3PO still being annoying most of the time. But there always has to be one. Back to Palpatine meeting Luke and Anakin. And we get what looks to be the makings of a replay of episode three, but no Samuel Jackson. Uh, also, Luke has no doubts. Anakin had all kinds of doubts. Luke has no doubts. Palpatine also less subtle now, uh, fully in power, so he doesn't have to go, well, we must save democracy, and what about your wife? He's just like, you You know what? You're going to turn to the dark side because I'm the emperor. Um, or at least Palpatine is more honest and direct now. I'll give him that. Uh, then we go back back to the surface and it turns out they're all trapped again it was a trap the whole time uh and then we hit the fleet flying into a trap as well uh and lando's the one who catches like oh the reason we can't get any reading on the shield is because the shield is still up uh, uh turn around before you run into the shield uh it seems to have saved some of the, th the fleet and then we're back i like the pacing now now we're going boom 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 we're back to palpatine uh the destruction of your alliance is happening. And that's his big lever here, is your friends are in danger. It doesn't hit as compelling as don't you want to save Padme from dying. So it seems like Luke's going to be able to hold up to this. Palpatine using hate to motivate Luke. Hate of me, hate of your dad for hurting your friends. That's the lever. Whereas Palpatine used love as the lever with Anakin. Don't you love Padme? Don't you want to save her? Uh, Okay, then we're back on the forest. Uh, the rebels got punked, but the mini bears go on the attack. Go, little guy. Storm clones got punked. Uh, so, uh, some of some of the primitive tribe tricks are cheesy, but overall, I love the idea of you know using sticks and stones to overcome technology. And then they're like, "Oh, uh, the door is locked. We need R two. Uh, where where are you when we need an elevator controlled?" Back to the space battle, and it's just so good. Uh, such a good space battle. Palpatine doesn't know about the mini bears, by the way. So he still thinks like, oh, your 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 folks are lost. Uh, and I'm like, eh, well, no, they're not, because they got mini bears. You bet you didn't know that. Uh, and then the big surprise. <sighs> Should have seen this coming, because we're replaying episode four a little bit here. Oh, the station works. It can fire on things. And for a minute, I thought they were just going to blow up the moon. 
and just say, here, we're going to blow up your friends. That might have pushed Luke over the dark side. And really, maybe that's what they should have done. But uh, no, they use the they, they start blowing up individual ships. Then R2 gets shot again. Uh, so he's out of the picture now. He can't help him. And Han says, well, maybe I can hotwire it. Well, if you could hotwire it, why didn't you? Um, and then we see a really compelling sequence with the mini bears, which makes some of the cheesiness earlier uh, way more palatable. Uh, because they're losing, and all of their tricks aren't working, and one of them dies, and it's it, it makes it more real for that. Okay, back to Lando, who's like, okay, uh, they can't shoot our ships if our ships are point blank with their ships because it's too close. It's a crazy plan, but they hide among the enemies. Then we're back to Luke. <laughs> this pace is great here. Well, I like, punch, punch, punch. Uh, Luke is weakening. Uh, Palpatine's getting to him. He's saying, yeah, your friends are going to die. Everything's bad. Uh, You're a bad person. And Luke finally cracks and starts to kill Palpatine. And I'm like, yes, just kill him. But Anakin stops him. And so now it's on. Uh, Nice work back on the surface as Chewie steals one of the Walker things, thanks to the help of a couple of the mini bears. And uh, we get some great scenes. Uh, Again, these are actually a little more believable than the earlier ones where they roll logs under the walkers. The walkers are horrible. Uh, They do a couple logs going into the head of a walker. Yes! Uh, Then you get uh, uh, a scene where troopers come up and capture Leon Han. You think... But Leia has a uh, blaster. She's just been shot. And she shows the blaster. And Han is like, I love you. And she says, I know. So call back to episode five. Then she uses the blaster to shoot the troopers. Yes. Chewie shows up in the walker. Yes. Everything's going well. Okay. Now we've got uh, father and son in a full-on fight. Uh, Where did Luke get so much better? He must have have practiced between episodes five and six. That's all I could say. Uh, And then then the most impressive thing is not how well he's battling his dad, but he gets control of himself, turns off his lightsaber, and says, I will not fight you, father. Uh, And Anakin says some stuff about uh, Kenobi, so he doesn't know about Yoda. Uh, I get the feeling Yoda never really liked Anakin. Like, he never really wanted Anakin to be trained. So maybe Anakin taught some things to Luke that he didn't teach <laughs> to, to Anakin Vader. Um, also, Luke starts playing the family card. He starts playing the Palpatine mind game on Anakin and says, you know, don't you love your family? And you can, you can, you can know that that's starting to work on Anakin. Okay, back to the space battle. Space battle, space battle, space battle, still crazy. Uh, uh, Han uh, fooling the Empire again. Call back to Episode Four, where he's pretending to be somebody from the Empire and, and in the, inside the Walker and gets in. Uh, I like the quick and pace. We're back to Anakin, uh, and Palpatine is saying, "Look, the only way you can save your friends, which is a direct echo from Episode Three, the only way you could save Padme." And you think Luke's going to pull it off here, and then Anakin guesses, "You have a sister." Damn. That broke Luke, uh, just like Dad, when they go after Leia, finally. I mean, Leia is Luke's Padme. Not the same kind of love, right? But it's family. Uh, and that's when Luke just loses it, and you're like, oh, he's going dark. Now he is doing what Anakin did in Episode 3, just wail, 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 emotion, 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 cuts off his dad's hand, and you're thinking, this is it. This is it. He's going to actually kill his dad and take his dad's place. So much hand loss, by the way. Anakin loses a hand, Luke loses a hand, now Anakin loses another hand. Um, and then Palpatine, just like he did with Anakin and Dooku, just like he did with Anakin and Samuel Jackson, is given the finish, yes, finish him. And Luke sees that hand, and then he sees his own hand, and he makes the connection that Anakin never could have, and he stops. And that it is clear that that is the moment when Luke Skywalker has finally become a Jedi. And he turns around and he says, I am a Jedi like my father before me. Except your father really never really became a real Jedi. But but it's a great line. And and you you see that Palpatine knows. He's like, yeah, ah, didn't work on you. Well, um, that's not good. Then we take a break. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the shield goes down. Big explosion. A little bigger explosion than I think Han and Leia could have gotten away from, frankly. But whatever. Okay, the shield's down. And then we're back to Palpatine, and he is shooting the lightning bolts 
Yoda didn't ever teach anyone, Luke or Anakin, how to do the lightning bolts. Apparently, Palpatine didn't shoot, uh, didn't teach Anakin how to do the lightning bolts. He taught Dooku. I don't know why he didn't teach Anakin. Uh, and now, now we're back in the episode three situation where Luke is the Samuel Jackson, uh, but this time Samuel Jackson is Anakin's son, not somebody that Anakin isn't sure he trusts because he's on the Jedi Council. Uh, and it makes you wonder, like, what in episode three? What if Samuel Jackson had been Padme? Right? I mean, Palpatine's smarter than that. But he's doing it to Luke. He's killing Luke in front of Luke's father. If he had been doing that with Padme, Anakin would have acted entirely different. Um, <sighs> this was supposed to be all about stopping Padme's death, right? And so this is the seminal moment of all six episodes. You see Anakin putting it together. Palpatine told me to save Padme. I had to do this. I did it. I turned to the dark side. Padme still died. It was a lie. Anakin sees the lie because he sees Palpatine killing his son. And he's like, wait a minute. He's killing another one of my family members now. He finally realizes I was wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you get the no. You get... Palpatine picked up by Anakin the way you wanted to happen in episode three finally happens. Maybe too late, better late than never. Kills Palpatine, throws him down the center of the station. Luke freaking saved his dad. Nobody else could. It's amazing. Then we're, then we're back to like, oh, right, we're supposed to blow up this station. Uh, not a lot of room for the junk ship in there. It loses its dish trying to squeeze through those channels. Uh, and uh, 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 then Anakin's old ship, the, uh, the big, huge ship outside, gets shot up and destroyed and crashes into the station. And then we're back to Luke uh, dragging Anakin through the space station that is under attack. Anakin not looking so good. Like, he's basically having to be dragged like a fireman's carry. Uh, I My theory here is that Palpatine and or the dark side had been keeping Anakin alive. And now that those are gone and he's turned back to the light, those injuries that he sustained all those years ago are too much for him. So he asked for his mask off. And here we go. First time. First time since episode three when that mask went over. Are we getting to see it from the front? We saw a quick scene from the back before. And he got old. <laughs> And he don't look so good. He is not special boy anymore. Uh, and then you get a beautiful moment. I want to look on you with my own eyes, tell your sister you were right. And he's gone. And he doesn't disappear. Good guy at the end, but I guess it was too late. All right, back to the destruction of the station, which uh, with Luke barely getting away in an enemy ship, apparently, but nothing comes of that. Uh, and the station blown up. Another costly loss for the government. Almost anticlimactic, frankly, after Anakin's death. Uh, and then Leia down on, on the ground. Han's like, uh, I'm sure Luke wasn't on it when it blew. And Leia's like, no, he wasn't. I'm getting all forcey now. I can I can sense him. Um, awkward Han's a little awkward. Like, well, you know, Luke is probably your thing. And, and of course, Leia's like, oh, oh, right. Yeah, you don't know. Uh, he's my brother. Han, mind blown <laughs> and very happy. Uh, and then we finish up. Uh, you see... Anakin Vader, full armor, black on the funeral pile. Goodbye, Annie. Uh, that is it for you. Luke will carry the legacy, I guess. He is the he is truly now the last of the Jedi. Uh, and then we see celebrations in uh, the 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 cloudy place uh, in uh, Naboo. We even hear a little Jar Jar there. Finally, uh, we're back to the capital for the first time since Episode Three. They're celebrating. They're pulling down a statue of Palpatine. Uh, then we see the mini bears playing trooper head drums. That's kind of fun. Uh, Lando and Han and Chewie are all talking to each other and we get a great moment with brother and sister. And then Han joins in cause he's going to be part of the family soon. Pretty much thing. Uh, and this is such a better we win party than episodes one or four, which were very formal government events. So this is just like, you know, scrappy rebels. We did it. Uh, and then, and then you're like, I, I was like, oh, well, you know, Anakin didn't fade away, but somehow some way, uh, we not only see Ghost Kenobi, but Ghost Yoda and Ghost Anakin. There he is. He's back, and he's got the robes. He's got the good guy robes on uh, now that he's a ghost. So cool. There's a smile. There's a smile from Luke. There's a hug. There's fireworks. We win! And that is the end. 
of Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. And that leads us to Episode 7. Now, I've seen the trailer. I'm pretend I'm a little dumb about it, but I've seen the trailer, and there's still fighting going on. Some of these celebrations seem to have been premature. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, and I will talk to you uh, a little more than a week uh, from recording this episode uh, when we actually pretend I'm dumb about The Force Awakens. It's been a blast doing these episodes. Thanks to everybody who said they've enjoyed them. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing them. And uh, you can subscribe if you're just watching this for the first time on YouTube. You can subscribe to the audio podcast at TomMerritt.com. Or if you're listening to the audio podcast and you're like, wait, I can watch this in video, go to YouTube.com slash Ace to Tech. There's a link at TomMerritt.com to that as well. Big thanks to Andrew Allen Trio, uh, the Andrew Allen Trio, AndrewAllenTrio.com. Get live from the cantina, a Star Wars jazz tribute there. I'll see you for one last episode. Bye.